Hello and welcome back to Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. I am Wan Badger. And this is episode two. So I just finished cranking out all the vehicles for our construction offices, plus a couple of extra buses here from uh, the vehicle factory. And now we're back to producing the bugs and exporting those. Soon we will be setting up a train to export those in greater numbers, which will in turn actually provide us a monthly profit, hopefully. Anyway, while I was sitting here watching these fill up, and of course I'll uh, end this video with a little clip of the final convoy of vehicles driving up from the factory, but while I was sitting here watching that happen, I noticed a few issues we have over in town. Number one issue being the sports field. There is a lot of people that aren't getting to play and that is making them very unhappy. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to build another another playground. Gotta make these people happy. And what was the other issue? Hmm. Well, not so much an issue. The school is absolutely packed and even even though it's uh, not operating at full efficiency that way because you have a bunch of people who spend essentially half their scheduled time to attend school and improve their education just waiting around at the school not improving their education they're still getting through there and they're still getting educated and I checked on the numbers and our population without any education in this city here is lower than the total number of children and babies meaning the education system is working it's not failing us at least not yet and really we're at the we're really at the peak of our population boom for this city so I don't think the education system here will fail us the kindergartens are absolutely packed they are almost always at or just below capacity the school is always packed tons of people hanging outside waiting to get in and the sports field is it's a mess but I don't think we need to improve our education system as far as the kindergarten and schools we do want to however improve our education system on the university side because right now we're only covering about oh maybe three-fourths of the city because we don't have any city bus routes and so the only people that can actually get to this university are the ones that can walk from their homes and the other issue I noticed here is this university is not within walking distance and I don't know if there's anything I can do about it to make this university within walking distance of the train platform it would uh, It would be wonderful if I could, but I, d I honestly don't think I can. Yeah. Not like there's anything I can do to cut that distance down for them. You can try a couple things, I guess. So, in the sake of trying, Let's try cutting something through here. Still nothing. Okay. Next plan, because that didn't work. Oof. I don't know. That doesn't seem like it would do anything there. No. Definitely wouldn't. <laughs> yep sorry we will not be taking any out-of-town students unless of course we have them come in by bus because I do believe I want to set up a city bus line not only so that we can get the rest of the city down here able to attend the university 
but also so that we can get any people who end up staying in the residence hall down to wherever they may need to go. I suppose. I don't... Actually, I don't think that is an issue, is it? No, because they can get to... They can get to here. And then from there, they can reach all these other things. Oh, no, this is what I wanted it for. Our school doesn't have complete coverage of the city either. So what that would do for us running buses back and forth between here, transferring students, is hopefully bring students down here that want a university education and bring students from these three houses here up around here to go to school and get a basic education. So let's throw on the wireframe and see where we can squeeze a bus stop in. Yeah, that'll do there. Now let's squeeze one in down here. Actually, before we do that, let's extend this road. Right there. That'll do it. Let's get those built up. Yes, I know. I said I would uh, start working on our construction industry and I just go and auto build some stuff. Okay, now that we got that, let's. Oh, shoot, wait. Passengers. We don't want passengers. We do want students. We don't want workers here. We don't want workers and we don't want passengers. Just students. That's all we want. Just students. So let's take our two spare buses we built. Didn't plan that, by the way. Just a just a nice little happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. Okay, and he's he's already on the roll. Good. Get out there. All right, now you can go. All right, he's rolling out too. Excellent. So now that we got a free city bus service, we should overload our public schools even more. Excellent. Socialism at its finest. Okay. Ooh, what do we have going on here? Why are trains backing up? I don't want to see trains backing up. I don't know. <sighs> What do we got here? Holy crap. Alright. Yeah, I think it's time. Let's see, where are you at? I think we can take you off of the road as soon as you empty out. Alright, head back to the depot. And in your stead, we're going to set up that freight train I've been uh, talking up so much. We definitely don't need this one. This one is... I don't, I don't know what you would ever need this one for. It's, it's an incredible amount of power. I suppose if you're going uphill from almost the entire route with a full freight train, maybe that would be needed. Not necessarily. Hmm. See, this one, this Polish one here, isn't much more in terms of cost. It is lighter. It is rated for two kilometers an hour faster, which, as we discussed before, that that vehicle speed rating isn't as significant as it seems but it has 
over a 50 percent it has over 50 percent more p engine power but I believe this one is quite a bit smaller meaning we could possibly squeeze an extra train car on there same with this one this one is tiny I don't think we want to get one that that tiny though and I suppose we could but ultimately the plan is to also have this freight train haul and steel because the same wagons that haul vehicles haul steel yeah there we go we can haul 603 tons of steel how many wagons is that one two three four five six seven eight nine so 36 vehicles I believe or personal cars anyway let's go ahead and close that out alright so we've already got over a full load waiting for this guy so we better get him down here load up there wait until loaded only load vehicles come to the custom house wait until unloaded we don't need to designate what to unload because he should only have vehicles on there to begin with all right let's follow this wonderful train and see what he's all about And as he stops there for Diesel, sh this should be the one and absolutely only time that he is coming down here to this loop. Because from here on out, he should be going between the factory and the border. And there's a fueling station right over there between the two. So he's going to stop here and load up. Turn the UI back on for a second. Holy moly. Oh no, why is he doing that? Don't do that. Don't do that. No, no, no. Okay. Pause, pause, pause. What is freaking wrong? Why must you do this train? What signal did I get back? It's this signal. Damn it. Yep, it's because I set this one up to try and close off this track. And in doing so, I confused myself, not too difficult, and closed off this track as well. That was, that was brilliant. Alright, so that should, uh, that should sort that out. But while we're in this view, let's go ahead and take a look here. Look at all of those. That is amazing. And look at the value of this cargo. So, the going rate for these is just under $55,000. And remember, the ruble is much stronger than the dollar in this game. And yet we're going to get almost twice as much rubles as we would dollars for this load of bugs. Alright, let's uh, set you on your way. Just flip around. Get smart. Figure it out. Right? Are you going to figure it out? Will you figure it out? You do figure it out. Alright. Alright. Round of applause for the engineer. So let's go ahead and head on down to the border. Let's take a look at our money before we hit there, though. This month, what did we blow money on? Vehicles imported. We spent 200,000 rubles on this train and a single load of vehicles on this train is gonna cover half the cost of the train that is that is something uh... we've also already got um, fifteen thousand rubles worth of bugs exported that was from the uh... flatbed truck that i stopped but here's the other thing this is the really big thing resources imported are only at seventy thousand this single load 
of bugs being exported is worth more than all of our imports. And we, and keep in mind, we are importing absolutely everything. The only thing we aren't importing is road vehicles. That is the only thing we are not importing at this point. But even though we are not importing those, we are still paying for the license to produce those, which count towards import cost, as well as purchasing trains. Look at the money go now. That's wonderful. So if you ignore the cost of the train and immigrant invitations, I don't, I don't, I didn't even, I didn't even click on the city hall this month and it's inviting immigrants. I don't know. There's some weird bug going on with the city hall, so my recommendation is until that's sorted out, don't bother building one because it just blows your money. So if we ignore that $245,000, that puts us in the green for this month. Now the question is, we had, what, 60 bugs when we launched this train? How many do we have sitting waiting for us now? Uh, 42, so we are not necessarily keeping up with that amount of production. So we probably aren't, yeah, we're sitting at just under 50% uh, production ratio. So... We're definitely not keeping up at that, but you still account for, what was it, 245? So that makes us 30,000 positive. I think even at that, even at that production rate, I think we are, I think we are still going to be in the positive. Not accounting for various expenses like vehicle import fees and construction fees which we've still got six million rubles sitting in the bank and that should hopefully be more than enough to establish all of our various construction industries hopefully and I didn't get anything done I said I wanted to do so I'm gonna do that really quickly Okay, and this brings me to a, a good point here. You can see here, even though we don't have this checked for workers, you'll notice there's some people that belong to the workers category hanging out here. The reason they're hanging out there is because these are workers with no education. Workers with no education cannot, they, they can't work. They can't um, fulfill any requirements for a job. So what they do is, even though they fall under the workers category, they're actually students. So they're going to be heading up to the school here. And the reason that those workers, those were workers without an education is because they probably lived in one of these three buildings here, grew up out of range of the school, so they never received that education. Now they've got to go get it. All right, let's take a final look over here at the uh, vehicle factory. How's production going? Not too bad, not too bad. It's, uh, you know, it's cranking them out. What's our money look like? <laughs> oh, yeah, we are definitely positive now. So we have no backlog of vehicles that we are working on exporting. And I just auto-built a few things. They were relatively cheap. A couple of football fields, a couple of walking paths, really cheap stuff. But everything else we're importing and we're still sitting at about 70,000 positive. And this thing's hovering between like 20 and 50 percent efficiency. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And hopefully this will become more efficient as our labor force fills out their education. Speaking of... Oh, oh wow. I think we can up, yeah, 
ever since we uh, expanded the range of this, we just got a surge of people looking to get a university education. So let's go ahead and, I guess, crank that up. I mean, we're at the point now. We're, posi we're, we're positive in money. So we can we can afford to slack off on production for, you know, a couple of months and get as many professors in here which in turn will provide as as many university educated workers for tomorrow as possible because we don't want we don't want these people sitting here wasting time because these people already have a basic education and they could be out there working but instead they're coming to get a university education so they can fulfill those higher tier job requirements that our economy uh, depends on right now honestly and so now you can see we got enough professors in there everybody is able to get educated which is awesome and that's at 45 so this okay so suppose we could turn that down again to let's turn it down to 55 which will give us you know 140 some some odd student capacity which is plenty and then once we reach that point where we have more university educated workers than we do jobs that require a university education at that point I think it'll be safe to start conducting research at the university I mean we already got people with computers televisions radio yeah not many with them though that's the thing these numbers will definitely start skyrocketing once we start expanding into these population centers especially these larger ones there's quite a few rather large cities out there so that's that all right i'm gonna go ahead and leave you with that little clip of the convoy rolling out from the vehicle factory to the construction offices hope you enjoy <laughs>